Hello guys, so continuing my style review series, today we're gonna talk about Jean Seberg. If you're new to my channel, I'm gonna leave the link on my Kiwi Image Identities playlist down below. Jean Seberg is one of his types in his book as a gamine type. I decided to make a review of her overall style, of her bone structure, and just see what exactly he recommends for this type and how she's following or not following that and what is happening when she does. So she was born in 1938 and uh, she lived half of her life in France and we're gonna remember that information a bit later because from my viewpoint this is where we get all that French chic situation happening maybe not from her particularly but this is very much connected that whole idea about that French chic and her so she was icon of French new wave cinema and uh, I watched one of the interviews and they asked her what is new wave cinema and she said everything is more relaxed and the camera is kind of following you not that strict rules about how it's being filmed my idea was it was a bit closer to a reality show there were more freedom in the way they played and normally they took people not professional actors but someone just from the street because the idea of directors was that it was more genuine more free more natural and more true so that was experiments and that time in the 60s. See, in the 50s and the 40s, it was more like time after war, after huge confusion. So in the 50s, it was more like time to settle down, to get grounded, to have that tradition and stability because everything that is very traditionally calms us down a little bit, yeah? So we are grounded, we feel like life is going on, everything is very predictable, it's just basically the tool how to calm down ourselves. But then in the 60s, there were new generation, generation that was born after the war. And this is when big changes started happening in art, in cinema, in many, many areas of art. Because art is one of those powers that changes a lot. So she passed away when she was 40 years old, unfortunately, in Paris, in 1979. So we can see it was pretty short period of time when we could analyze her style. She started playing in the movies in 1957, so it's like the end of the 50s then full 60s, then some 70s too. So basically what we're gonna look at today is 60s, 70s decades. Again, which is most often right now on my star review series because we're still looking all, on all those old movie icons. She was called American to first master French girl fashion, which is very, very interesting. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna see the examples. Now, she's a gamine body type. He assigned Jean Super to a gamine category. Right now he doesn't use clear types, gamine, natural or classic, but we're still gonna look at that classic version of the book. If now he would put her to a softer or more flamboyant version of gamine, I would say she is more soft gamine than flamboyant gamine. She has more yin in her face. She has some yin in her body too. But I'm still gonna stick to the book and I'm still gonna look at her as a pure gamine today. And gamines are normally pretty straight. They have delicate bone structure. They have pretty dramatic bone structure, meaning they are straight, but they are short. Normally they're very small. This is their yin side. Also, they look pretty youthful. So that is another their yin side. Normally they have narrow shoulders, narrow rib cage. Delicate facial features, delicate arms and legs, delicate hands and feet. Of course, first thing that I'm going to talk to you about is her hair, because that was very revolutionary at that time, that the girl would just almost shave her head like that, especially in the end of the 50s. It was not even 60s at that time. And uh, as I know, she played Jeanne d'Arc, the warrior woman from the history. We know that Jeanne d'Arc, she cut her hair short. So probably that's why they shaved her head. And then she was playing the Jeanne d'Arc, I think in 1950 so it was the end of the 50s and looks like that haircut really stick to her after that and this is how she started her filming career and then throughout all those years of her life she whether had slightly longer hair or she made it that very short pixie again so she would go from this to that even during the 70s even though in the 70s we have a little bit different vibe a little bit different direction yeah so you can see what was the end of the 50s in Hollywood world we can see 
Marilyn Monroe, we can see Jane Russell. Look at that feminine, glamorous vibe. Very accented femininity. Even Audrey Hepburn, who wasn't going for that lush style in her life. Even she, in the end of the 50s, she looked much more soft and feminine with a glamorous hair and glamorous makeup. And France and Jean Seberg, this is where it all started. It was pretty shocking for some people, but at the same time, it looked very very good on her and it kind of fit her you know when she was talking when she was wearing that clothes that she was wearing the way she played in the movies all that was very purely her and it freshened her so sometimes what happens when gamines are growing their hair and especially when they're doing that big hair glamorous hair back calmed hair so it normally whether dragging them down or their bone structure looks a little bit strange with that too smallish and boyish or girlish or teenage like sometimes so they can't carry very well that huge volume hair but again photos is a different thing a little bit you can style pretty much anything in the photos you can create any illusion in the photos with your body because it's a frozen picture it's a certain angle so people can't see you moving walking talking they can't see your gestures so all that is not as visible as if you would walk outside with this kind of hair of course loads of things depend on outfit but from my viewpoint hair is one of those most important things so i think with that short hair and with that style slightly boyish or tomboy slightly i don't care style style that really argues with all that 50s tradition new look and glam i think in some aspects she anticipates the style of french women for the next several decades i think she anticipates the style of the 60s in general it was different yes twiggy also was in the 60s who started all that short hair and kind of girlish trapeze short dresses and their innocent eyes kind of story that influenced a lot it was more like a london it was more like an english style but i think jean seberg she did start something for sure she has very yin face very soft face so sometimes when we see her pictures with longer hair with very soft and uh, curled and rounded hair you can see how beautiful she is with that soft hair she looks probably older yeah, she looks more feminine, more like her mama rather than like a small girl. But here's the trick. Sometimes when gamines are doing that kind of va va voom like lush, volumized, curled hair, long hair, sometimes it's dragging them down, but you can't see this unless you see her full body in movement, preferably, because pictures is still a frozen thing. And you can't predict sometimes how she would look in life rather than in, in pictures, you can really go for more or less any style you want you can create an illusion of any essence in the photos because first of all it's an angle you can really pick up the right angle for yourself the right photo and people can kind of predict your gestures or predict how you're gonna walk but then when you have your full body pictures we already can see how much that huge hair and that slightly narrow and pretty short body how that just slightly doesn't match so she should probably wear some higher heels just to create that more vertical line for herself or just add something extra something else just to balance that huge hair so that huge hair is not kind of following her bone structure completely sometimes it's dragging gamines down i never seen her with the 60s classic makeup with all those huge lashes that unblended crease line for example or lashes that are drawn underneath i didn't see her with that she always had very natural everything very naturally defined lash line slightly black lash line with some lashes sometimes maybe i could see some extra lashes too but it was never over the top and her lips have always been also pretty new or pink or very freshly made also some fresh blush on her cheeks too very natural almost like no makeup look in the 70s though she started doing that very trendy thing blue eyeshadow remember so many stars that I'm reviewing their style so many of them just go for that 
light blue eyeshadow. So the problem with the 70s was that, as I say in my every video, 60s and 70s are like so different. 60s is structure, unnatural, geometry, color blocks, bright colors, contrast, and unnatural hair, unnatural makeup. 70s, on contrary, elongated lines, unconstructed lines, very earthy, boho, natural, floral, blended, light, almost no makeup, natural hair, natural grown hair, and all that stuff. So such a big difference, and so many stars, they do that light blue eyeshadow on them in the 70s. And uh, the, the thing is that for some women with that softer bone structure, fresh on them, it really makes their eyes pop. But for some women with more strong bone structure, and even though gamines have very delicate bone structure, they do they can look a little bit strong and they have some young in them that fits that straightness. And they have very sharp bones too, so that sharp stands for some geometry. So sometimes for gamines and for women with more young bone structure, that blue eyeshadow or something light on their eyes can be too tiring on them, especially sometimes Remember in the 70s they were doing that blue eyeshadow on them, slightly like orangey coral lips, almost like a lip color, very nude. Everything was very, very nude. So yeah, for some women with some bone structure, they did look slightly tiring. Now, if we compare her style in the 70s and in the 60s, it's not such a big difference, you know? There have been stars where the, the difference is huge. I would say that the biggest changes she had when she had longer hair and shorter hair and with the shorter hair she kind of felt her style and she went for like more tomboyish style teenage style for shorter shapes and stuff when she was having that longer hair then she moved to that completely different very feminine very romantic vibe which is very very interesting and that does fit her i think too that gentle, very feminine style. But still, if you look at her just walking, talking, it's a little bit too tiring on her. It's dragging her down slightly because the bone structure is still slightly different. She doesn't have even close bone structure to Marilyn Monroe, for example. And yes, in the 70s, of course, she got older. She was in her 30s. So we could see sometimes that long sleeved elongated dresses, unconstructed silhouettes, very soft with some florals. We can see some grown hair, blended makeup. And uh, this actually picture reminds me of Debbie Harry. She's a rock star and she started being popular in the 70s. So that reminds me of her a little bit with all those red lips and that blended eye makeup. So that was pretty unusual for Jean Sieber from what I could see because normally we can see her with no makeup or very, very gentle makeup. So basically they don't look their best in something huge, oversized. If you want, you can check this video, uh, Biggest Don'ts for the Body Types, when I'm uh, describing what would probably be the most further things from for each type. So if we talk about gamines, probably the most further point in fashion would be for them something unconstructed, very relaxed, big and bulky, huge, hanging, big drapes, something extremely feminine glamorous in that classic way of glamour and big rounded shapes all that is dragging them down long vertical lines something like to the floor and they look amazing in those short shapes with color blocks geometric shapes with higher collars with uh, more cropped things at the top or normal waist pants but not lowered for sure because their legs can look too short then because they are one of the smallest types out of all. So they do look petite. Very interesting thing, t-shirt with uh, printed words on it. And it was in the 60s. So I haven't seen anyone would wear something like that, like that until the 70s, which is interesting. That is another thing how that new wave cinema really influenced on the style of people. So Stripes. Stripes was one of her signature looks. Stripes considered to be very classic piece, like a basic wardrobe piece. And then she was wearing stripes pretty often. Her stripes were small and it looks amazing on gamines. It looks very sharp and precise on gamines. Even a dress, dress in a new look shape, 
combined with the stripes and her short hair was very cute on her. So normally all the tops and all the shirts that she was wearing, whether were tucked inside of the pants or it was shortened, cropped, or she could do a knot here on the front. And it was a very right decision because this is how you balance your proportions. She would have regular waist pants, never low-waisted, of course, maybe a little bit high-waisted, pants or jeans. And pants were normally narrow or straight, and sometimes it were wide jeans. They gave you a very relaxed, slightly undone, and very effortless look. She's not caring about the femininity. She's not about all that outer glam, outer shine. She's reading books. She's more into modern art. She has different ideas ideas about life, you know, so that was kind of something that she would pronounce with her style and I almost couldn't find jewelry in her. There are so many looks that she has, absolutely empty ears, empty neck, nothing here, no rings, no bracelets, very minimal accessories, very rare sometimes when she had like mo those more feminine looks, she would wear some pearls in her ears and uh, funny, I've seen her with a pearl necklace, but she was wearing it as a choker very close to her neck. So basically, if you go for that classic pearl necklace, you normally don't wear it like that. But I think that's such a gamine thing and it's such a cute detail. I can't say that she was dressed very colorful. Sometimes she would have that bright colors, but most of the time she had that very classic and very casual look with those t-shirts, jeans, cardigans, very simple, blacks, whites and uh, of course loads of stripes. Sweaters, she could have a small sweater with higher collar, like just that regular sweater, or she would have bigger oversized turtleneck, so still something closer to here. It's pretty big difference actually if you're wearing an oversized sweater and it has lower neck and lower sleeves and lower just in general down there. It's oversized. It's a big difference than if you have oversized sweater and it's long and oversized everywhere, but you have that turtleneck. So it actually balances shorter bodies and it's kind of lifting them up slightly. So it balances the disproportion of short bodies. So that neck kind of is making this piece look higher on her body. She doesn't look as grounded. And that chunky needs all that look very cozy on her because that huge sweater and she being very delicate is sticking out of that sweater on top and on the bottom so it's just very cute and uh, again that effortlessness something effortless something that doesn't quite suit her she's wearing that and it's actually very modern idea about fashion i think now it's just a little bit different vibe coats there were different coats that she was wearing sometimes the coats were pretty oversized and they actually looked like she just got them from her boyfriend again it was very fresh and very playful on her very playful she was like a teenager that wasn't that huge coat and she with her very delicate body was just sticking out on top and on the bottom and her small hands are also sticking out of that coat. She also could have narrower coats and all that looks amazing on them. If we talk about dresses, she had different dresses closer to the 50s and in the beginning of the 60s she would have something close to new look. When she was wearing that black dress, of course she had that detail by her neck which is very beautiful, very gamine like, still bigger skirt but that all was balanced because the skirt was slightly shorter and then she had that small and very delicate shoes. Now closer to the 70s she would wear sometimes something longer sleeved, longer skirt, dresses like that. But she was trying to balance that with her more feminine and more grown hair. But the best thing for Ganines in this case of course dresses with a precise shape and pretty narrow dresses closer to the body and all those small details like belt or pockets on a dress even on, or on a short it all looks very very charming on them. If we talk about accessories in general she would wear cat eye glasses, small, very geometric, very gamine-like, beautiful. She sometimes would wear small hats, man-style hats. I would never see her with huge and very feminine hats with flowers and stuff. She would wear a scarf on a head or on neck. Actually, very interesting detail. I like how just that very small detail like scarf can actually change the whole outfit. And also her shoes. Her shoes has always been pretty delicate, sharp. I've never seen her with something extremely bulky, too big, too heavy. And um, yeah, sometimes she would wear just sneakers. Very, very charming on her. And of course, those casual classic outfits with all those uh, classic shirts. 
um, classic pants or shorts. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. We're gonna talk more. Thank you. Bye bye. Subscribe on my Pinterest for 13 boards as an inspiration for the body types. Also, you can subscribe on my Instagram. All the links I'm gonna leave down below. Also, you can become my sponsor or subscribe on my Patreon for some exclusive videos, some early access to these videos, and um, just if you want to support me and my channel. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.